opportunity to get into God's Word and study, uh, you know, as I do so often during the week, and, and brought me back to this story that many of us know, right? But uh, trials and difficult situations are facts of life. Trials and difficult situations are facts of life. Many times we find ourselves face to face with giants, problems that seem overwhelming to us. These could be problems at home, with our relationships, or other difficult circumstances. And we need to know how to respond to every threat by laying hold of the kind of victorious faith that looks beyond what we can see to what God sees. Tonight, we'll look at what it took for David to defeat Goliath and how to apply those principles to our own lives. Now, I know for those of you that grew up in a church, and this story is, to you, is very familiar. And you're familiar with it, but let me begin uh, by summarizing what's going on in our story up, up until uh, where we'll pick it up in 1 Samuel. But the Philistine army, they had, had gathered for war against Israel. And the, the two armies, they, they faced each other, uh, camped for battle opposite sides of this steep valley. Okay? And a Philistine giant measuring over nine feet tall and, and wearing full armor, full suit of armor. He came out each day for 40 days mocking and challenging the Israelites to fight. Like, hey, come on, let's do this. His name was Goliath. Saul, the king of Israel, and the whole army. The whole army. They were terrified of Goliath. Why did they wait 40 days to begin the battle? Probably for several reasons. Everyone was afraid of Goliath. He seemed invincible. Not even Saul, the tallest man in Israel, had stepped out to fight. Also, the sides of the valley were very steep. Whoever made the first move would have a strong disadvantage and probably suffer great loss. Both sides were waiting for the other to attack first. One day, David... The youngest son of Jesse was, was sent to the battle lines by his father to, to bring back news of his brothers. Now, David was probably just a young teenager at the time. While he was there, David heard Goliath shouting his daily defiance, and he saw the great fear that stirred within the men of Israel. David responded, who is this uncircumcised Philistines that, that he should defy the armies of the <clears throat> living God? And so we'll pick up the story here. We're going to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 31 through 39. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up with a Bible app on your phone, or you can follow along with me on the screen. But here's what it says. And when the words were heard... Which David spake, and they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. A servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. 
And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he, he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Alright, so, <clears throat> David remembered all the times that God had delivered him from the brink of disaster, as we see there in this passage. And God had always given David the ability he needed to triumph. Now he faced one of the greatest challenges of his life, a trained and well-armed warrior slash giant named Goliath. And David chose, as you see there in the end of the passage, not to wear the king's armor because it felt awkward or unfamiliar to him. David was comfortable with a, with a slingshot, a weapon he was very skilled at using. So, there's a lesson to be learned here. A lesson to be learned here. God is not limited as to what He can use to bring about victory. He's not limited as to what He can use to bring about victory. No armor, a slingshot, a teenager facing a skilled warrior, a giant. Do you hear me? God is not limited as to what He can use to bring about victory. God will use the unique skills He's already placed in your hands. So don't worry about wearing the king's armor. Just be yourself. Be yourself and use the familiar gifts and talents that God has given you. He will work miracles through you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. So dressed in his simple clothing, no armor, carrying his shepherd's staff, slingshot, and a pouch full of stones, David approached Goliath. The giant cursed at him, hurling threats and insults, but that didn't stop young David. Oh. As a matter of fact, he didn't even hesitate for one second. Everybody else cowered in fear. But David ran to the battle. He ran to the battle. He knew that action needed to be taken. He knew that action needed to be taken. David did the right thing in spite of discouraging insults and fearful threats. The only opinion that mattered to David was God's opinion. So let's read on in the chapter. We'll skip down to verse 45 through 49. It says, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day... Will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, 
and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. All the earth will know that there is a God. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and, and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and, and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, and he took thence a stone, and he slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. Who's your Goliath? Think about that. When, when David faced Goliath, it seemed like he was up against an impossible situation. What Goliath didn't understand was that God was on David's side. With God's help, David was victorious. Remember that God is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. He specializes in making impossible situations possible. You follow me? The, the fact that I'm standing here before you as one of your pastors is, is a perfect example of God. Turning what many people believe to be, myself included, an impossible situation into reality. Listen, I spent the majority of my adolescence making a bunch of bad decisions that led to a lot of mistakes and a lot of failures in my life. Even when I sensed God's calling in my life for me to surrender to ministry, I doubted God's plan. But God didn't give up on me. One of my biggest excuses was my fear of speaking in public. But once I got around that, once I came to realize that it wasn't about me or my insecurities and inabilities and allowed God to work through me, He began to take all that away. You know, they call it surrendering to ministry for a reason. That's why I believe so many pastors fail in their ministries and can't stay in a place longer than 18 months because they're allowing themselves to interfere with what God wants to do through them. They haven't fully surrendered. <clears throat> the same was true for David. His secret to success, uh, his secret to success was the ability, was his ability to trust and obey God. Had he merely looked at the, the giant challenge facing him, he would have turned around and run away. As the rest of the Israelites did, right? But through faith, David saw what the Israelites did not. David defeated Goliath by hurling a stone at the giant. So we'll now look at a, a few stones that we can use to slay the giants of our lives. Stone one. Attitude. <clears throat> Attitude as found in 1 Samuel 17, 32 through 37. <clears throat> Attitude. We can be stripped of everything in this life at any given moment except for one thing. That is the ability to choose our attitude in any given set of circumstances. To choose the path we will take. <clears throat> the chaplain was... Uh, speaking to a soldier uh, on a cot in a hospital. 
You've lost an arm for a great cause, he said. No, said the soldier with a smile. I didn't lose it. I gave it. Spiritual victories are won first in our minds. If you give in to feelings of fear and doubt, you will lose every single time. But when you focus, when you focus on the truth of God's Word, you will win every time. David didn't focus on the size of this giant. He focused on the size of his God. Every challenge we ever face with presents an opportunity for God to display His faithfulness and love. Every challenge we're ever faced with presents an opportunity for God to display His faithfulness and love. So instead of yielding to thoughts of fear and failure, surrender yourself to God, trusting Him, even when you don't know what the next day will bring. Train yourself. And it's hard to do as we get older, we get set in our ways. But train yourself to look beyond what you can see to what God sees. <clears throat> Stone two. <clears throat> Stone two. <clears throat> Faith. And that's in, in 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. In times of extreme pressure, God stretches our faith and deepens our dependence <coughs> upon Him. Without a strong, abiding faith, we can quickly yield to temptation and fear, especially when the, the trial or the difficulty we're facing is intense or prolonged. God develops, uh, developed David's trust until it became unshakable. At the Building 429 song, if you saw my post, we won't be shaken. God developed David's trust until it became unshakable. <clears throat> David's faith in God caused him to look at the giant from a different perspective. He looked at the giant from a different perspective. Goliath was merely a mortal man defying an all-powerful God. And David looked at the battle from God's point of view. If we look at giant problems and impossible situations from <coughs> God's perspective, we realize that God will fight for us and with us. When we put things in proper perspective, we see more clearly and we fight more effectively. David's foundation was his faith in the sovereignty of God. That's why he knew he would not fail in his quest to defeat the Philistine giant. He knew who was in charge. David knew that the God he put his faith in knew his heart. We can come to church every time the doors are open and put on a mask, pretending to be someone we're not. But we need to remember that even though we can fool each other, we can never fool God. He knows the real us. Ask yourself, can others around me outside this church tell I'm a Christian? Can others inside tell I'm a Christian? Most importantly, does God know me by the way I allow Christ to live through my life? David trusted in God's strength. Not in his own strength. As we see in verse 45 and 47. One of my favorite Bible verses is Philippians 
As an athlete, you know, that becomes a lot of times a favorite passage, but not just because, uh, uh, not because it, it's uh, become the, the latest battle cry for modern Christianity, uh, but because of its implications in my life as a believer in Christ. What most people fail to realize when, when they're quoting this verse to pass a test or win a ball game or get a promotion at work, etc., is that Paul was suffering extreme persecution when he penned these words. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He was beaten. He was in jail. But he knew that because of the strength he had living inside him through Christ that he would be able to endure. No matter what you face. And I doubt that it's ever anything as serious as Paul faced. At the end of the day, you're going to be alright. Because of the strength that God provides. Through His Holy Spirit living inside each and every one of us as believers. Amen. Stone three is action. <clears throat> Stone three is action as we find in the tail end of the, of the story. In uh, chapter 17, 48 through 49. Listen, David didn't wait for Goliath to come to him. He didn't wait. He didn't wait for Goliath to come to him. No, he faced the giant. Now, one of the things that I enjoy uh, doing in my recreational time is coaching sports. I've been around sports all my life, and, and now uh, I'm able to, to share this passion with my daughters, Trin and Jade. My girls have turned out to be quite the athletes. I'm a proud dad. And one of the things I've been teaching them is that when they're faced with an opponent coming at them, if they just stand back and allow the opponent to shoot, then their opponent has a pretty good chance of scoring. However, if they come out a little bit and they face that opponent, if they put pressure on them, they decrease the opponent's chance to score. Faith is the same way. Faith doesn't retreat, fall back, no. Faith is running ahead running head on towards our opponent. David had a plan to defeat the giant. <clears throat> you can't go through life without a plan. The good news, listen, is that we've already been given a plan through God's Word. We just have to execute it. Coming up with a plan is half the battle. The other half is Carrying the plan out. We can't execute the plan if we don't know the plan. That's why Bible study is so important for us as believers. Not just individually, but... David wasn't afraid to go after the giant because he knew that God was on his side. How many of you know God's on your side? You can face any... Circumstance with confidence and hope because it's not your strength, wisdom, energy, or power that brings victory. Victory comes from God's ability. And when you place your trust in Him, listen, you tap into an irresistible force that no one, that nothing, no thing <clears throat> can successfully oppose. God is big enough to defeat any giant that may come into your life. You can stand up and defeat any problem, no matter how big, when you're on God's side. The battle belongs to God, and He will fight for you. Who or what is your Goliath today? Are you facing a giant 
problem or impossible situation, stop for just a minute and refocus. Can you see the situation more clearly from God's vantage point? Do you need to take courageous action in the face of insults and fearful circumstances? Do you trust that God will fight for you and with you? Remember, God's opinion is the only one that matters. God's preference is the only one that matters. Whatever Goliath you face, you need to bear one truth deep within your heart. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And when you place your trust in Him, He will not allow you to suffer defeat. You may go through times of failure. Life may not always turn out the way you planned. But ultimately, God will be glorified and you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just... <clears throat> Thank you again. I can't thank you enough. Just for all that you've done for us, God. And just thank you that, that we can have confidence in our Christian life if we put our trust in you. And if we put our trust in you, we don't have to fear anything. There's no impossible situation that you can't handle. Nothing catches you by surprise. You're all-knowing. You're all sovereign. You're all powerful. You're the God that loves us, and you're the God that we love and serve. Thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in and through our lives, in and through this church. <clears throat> God just leading guides each and every day. God, if there's somebody here in this room, in this sanctuary that doesn't know you, and they're feeling your tongue in their heart, I pray that, God, that they would come and they would speak to me, they would speak to Pastor Kevin, and we could have the opportunity to share the greatest message that they'll ever hear, the greatest gift that they'll ever receive. Give them the strength and courage to approach us so that we can talk. We'll welcome them with open arms just as you do. Also, if anybody wanted to be baptized, join the church, if they need prayer, <coughs> God, help them to know when we conclude this service that you, that they can come and they can talk to us, God. And we will, we will welcome them with open arms and prayer and uh, that you'll be there to, to lead and guide us. God, as we get ready to have our time of fellowship and go over to the uh, fellowship hall and hang out and, and eat and, and as we uh, hang out around the campus uh, tonight, play basketball and whatnot, keep everybody safe and just help us have a wonderful time. Again, thank you for this night. Thank you for your word. Help us not to just hear it, but help us to apply it. Help us to take heed of what we heard and then take some action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.